to some fireplaces It's hard to carry on When you feel all alone Now I've swung back down again It's worse than it was before If I had seen such riches I could live Good evening, everyone. Um, let's turn that down. Sorry about that. We're going to talk tonight about an amazing, iconic goalkeeper um, that we got at Arsenal Football Club, Pat Jennings. Pat Jennings, basically, um, is born in Uri, Northern Ireland, on the 12th of June, 1945. Um, and he played 326 league and cup games at Arsenal. But his only major honour was winning the FA Cup winners' medal for Arsenal against Man United in the iconic um, 1978-79 Cup final. Um, but he also played 119 uh, games for Northern Ireland between 1964 and 1986. Now, Pat Jennings was at Spurs and was an absolutely outstanding manager, uh, player for them. But why did he come to Arsenal? Well, it's quite a strange affair. Arsenal, at that point in time, had uh, Jimmy Rimmer in goal. Now, Jimmy Rimmer had joined from Man United when Bob Wilson was still our number one. And he had joined as a backup for Bob Wilson because at the time Jimmy Rimmer was at Man United, he couldn't get a lot of first team play because of the Man United keeper at the time, um, Alex Stepney. But he came to Arsenal, Bob Wilson was coming to end of his time and Jimmy Rimmer took over from Bob Wilson. Now, Jimmy Rimmer was a decent goalkeeper, but Terry Neal, the Arsenal manager at the time, wanted to improve upon him. So, a strange thing happened. Um, at the time, the Spurs manager was Keith Birkinshaw. And he decided that he wanted a different goalkeeper. Now, every manager in football makes mistakes. And... This is one of the biggest blunders that he made as the Spurs manager. He decided to sell Pat Jennings in August of 1977. Um, Pat was 32 and he still had basically a third of his playing career ahead of him. And the decision to sell him basically would halt the Spurs manager for years to come. Um, had the goalkeeper, as in Pat Jennings, um, who a lot of top pundits at the time considered that um, he was better than the England goalkeepers in Peter Shilton and Ray Clements. But he was allowed to join Arsenal rather than join any other team. This would turn out to be a major, major error. Um, and he was allowed to join them for a fee that really didn't commensurate his outstanding abilities. And the Spurs fans, who were already seriously, seriously smarting over the fact that um, they were seriously outraged, by the relegation that Spurs had in this year to the second division. But the fact if they had Arsenal had sold him to a, a different team and 
a higher fee, it might have been something the Spurs fans could have bitten the bullet on. But Pat Jennings was sold to Arsenal for £45,000 and the White Hart Lane terraces were seethed with unrest. This could never... Not How can they do this? How can they sell our goalkeeper to Arsenal? You know, the, the North London rivals. It, 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 was, it was not a good move by Keith Birkinshaw. And we'll come in and we'll see how that transpires. But in the chat we got tonight, Warren, Warren Tito, I know you've been waiting for this one forever, mate. So here it is, mate. Hope you enjoy it. I can't wait. This is going to be epic. Um, uh, Warren says, I'm so looking forward to this. The man and the other players called God. Yep. That is very true. And um, we've got Luca. Luca, good to see you, mate. Hope you're well. Hi. Um, and Joe Smith. Hi, Joe. Hope you're well. Ooh, hello. Yep. How are you? And um, Kyle Walsh is here. Uh, looking forward to this, Jez. I had the privilege of meeting the man one time in Devon, Dublin Airport. He was a gentleman. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, he was a very quite quiet man, really, for the size of him. Um, I was fortunate. Once, once or twice. Um, I actually had a kickabout of him once. Um, me and some mates, but that was um, back in time. And uh, Gavin O'Flattery says, uh, be looking forward to this, Pat, an Irish legend. Absolutely, he was. He was. Um, Eris says, uh, good evening, Jez. Big up, matey. I just turned now, matey. I love you, matey. We got Warren. London is red. Watching from Poland. I hope it's uh, not too cold there, mate. It's, oh, I know it probably is because it's time of year, but it's been bloody freezing here. Um, static. Good evening, Static. Hope you're well, my friend. Hope you're well. And uh, Daniel says, big up, Jez. Hi, Dan. Hope you're well. And we have st uh, Static. says Kyle Walsh, Gunner, lol. I know what you meant. Hey, bro. I hope you can see your review of the game ASAP. So we'll get into this one. Um so, Pat Jennings arrives at Arsenal. Now, um, it does transpire that later in time, Keith Birkinshaw, the Spurs manager, was to own up to his error. And the, Keith Birkinshaw at the time was to go on to be one of Spurs' best ever managers. Hmm. Interesting. But he was, to be fair, he was. Uh, never won a lot, but he got them back in Div 1. And, um, of course, he did move them forward, but we will see what happens. But we've now got Pat Jennings at Arsenal. The Arsenal fan base aren't particularly happy about it. I remember those times. And we were thinking, well, why, why has Terry Neal bought this guy? Um, it was like, well... Well, why have we bought a player that's in his decline when we really needed to move forward with a new keeper? Now, at, at this point in time, we could have we were in the in with a chance of getting um, Ray Clements, England goalkeeper, but no, we went for Pat Jennings, and um, it was not a great welcome to the club, the terraces, the Arsenal. Fans were not really happy about it, thinking, mm, well, really? But I can assure you, those fears were soon laid to rest swiftly and emphatically. I mean, I my first game seeing him play was Everton home. It was August 1977, and Arsenal 1-1-0. And... The winning goal was scored by an Arsenal defender, a player we're all going to know, a guy called Richie Powlin. Yeah. Um, he was a bit part player at Arsenal, but he, he got the winning goal. And I remember Pat Jennings that day was absolutely outstanding. Um, when he stood with his back to the North Bank uh, in the second half, he, it was like, Wow. This guy, this guy's serious. And he went on to become an absolute legend of Arsenal. Uh, 
players with the love of all the terraces at Highbury because he proved the fact that he still had um, a lot in him. And the fact uh, who he had uh, recovered from a serious ankle injury earlier that year um, was awesome in the fact that it was a very serious injury, in fact, and it was a potential issue that it may have actually ended his career. But he came back and he came back emphatically with a point to prove. I think he was annoyed that he'd given great service to Tottenham and yet Keith Birkinshaw had let him go really quite cheaply, to be honest. Um, so uh, he, he came into Arsenal and I think it was, it was a, like a little bit of a point that he wanted to prove Keith Birkinshaw wrong and he wanted to make a, a stamp on the fact that he still had it in him and he could still go on and play and he wanted to prove the other side of North London very very wrong the Spurs fans were still very upset in the fact they were now in Division 2 so they were smarting on that one and also the fact that they'd lost their iconic goalkeeper an international goalkeeper. So now the thing with Pat Jennings, he was a very calm and commanding figure in, in his box. And he basically commanded that defence in such a way. He, he never really called for the ball, but he gave such confidence to the back four that they knew if the ball came over, he was on it. And in fact, when you saw Pat Jennings between the sticks, he looked so big. Um, he rarely called for the ball, yet he infused, as I say, his fellow defenders with such calm and confidence from uh, being in front of a, you know, yeah, a seasoned master. He was. He, he had... Great international experience. All right, okay, Northern Ireland hadn't seen massive um, success, but he had international quality experience. And I think that made, to the defence at the time, and we didn't have the best defence back then, um, that it gave them that quality and, it, and the fact that he had that knowledge and he had that commanding type of feel um i think that really did help the defense at the time and don't forget we had a very young david o'leary around then who came in from the team um so at the end of the day it was not very very long before the arsenal terraces were enthralled by his command of capturing the ball sometimes one-handed with his massive hands and he quickly very quickly gained the name of the terraces of shovel hands and i can remember watching him literally pick passes out of the air with one hand and you, you know you think christ what other goalkeeper can do that no, and I, at that point in time, I can't think of any that could actually literally leap up and take snatch that ball off an attacker player's head, bring it down and be that commanding. And Warren's mentioned this one. There was one occasion um, at Highbury playing Norwich, the Norwich striker put a bullet shot in at Jennings and he just went and that ball stuck to his glove like glue and there was there used to be jokes made has he got suckers on his gloves because when that ball hit his hand it stuck there it stuck there um and it, it that I think also gave a lot more positivity to um, the defence, 
it certainly did to the fan base and it was not very very long it was only to about october of that 77 season start of 77 78 that the fans suddenly thought hello hello we've got somebody here and um another attribute that he was able to pull off seemingly impossible saves and his as his agility in the air was um he's a, he a big guy he was a big guy um and getting and the other thing is he could get down quickly to intercept crosses and he was not afraid of going in at the um feet of players he, he would literally pop body and soul into that um and he, ba he basically very very quickly became an icon of the arsenal fans and at the age of 32 he still had the ability to hone his skills further and the, the, the great thing about him was he was a accordingly i never saw this of course he he would train and train and train because he wanted to go that extra mile um and you can't ask any more than that from a player can you let's, let's be fair i mean um carl says static i'm uploading the video tonight uh i'll keep an eye out for that as well carl i will uh everybody go and support carl waltz's channel um t top fella speaks facts um no messing and speaks from the heart and that's all you can ever ask from an arsenal fan so big up to you carl nice one uh the mcmanus gaming pat jennings what a legend yes mate absolutely brilliant player for arsenal um tony nere hi mate. hi mate i hope you're well hi jez and chat um yeah i'll say hope every well is everybody is well in the chat um gabriel flashley never won a lot either did spurs though uh, no, they didn't. Um, at least Arsenal, Arsenal can say they gave him an FA Cup winner's medal. Uh, he never won jack shit at Spurs. Just saying. Um, Luca, uh, uh, you okay? I'm fine. I don't know if you're speaking to me, but I'm fine. Um, Darren, good to see you, mate. Um, evening, Pat Jennings. Yes, yeah, you remember him. You were there. Um, Gracie May, big up. Hi, oh, Gracie. Hope you're well. Uh, hope you're not working too hard with all these exams and other things you're doing. Um, but uh, Jude is. Hi, Jez. Uh, hi, Jude. Hope you're well. And we have the legend that is Mr. Devious Oregon Gooner uh, for the Vino Fund. <laughs> Thank you, mate. Um, up the Arsenal. And uh, big up to you, mate. Um, absolute top class man, this guy. And uh, love him to death absolutely always supports everyone and uh you're a legend man in my eyes thank you for your donation very kind thank you man uh warren's team talks says i remember him saving a ferocious ferocious shot one-handed yeah that i think you mentioned in the past that was the norwich game that you were at and i was at uh gavin against it uh, and the gloves were shite back then compared to today's glove yeah they were really weren't they Let's be right they were they weren't um they weren't great uh as in modern technology um but he was class arsenal first hi jess hope you're well i'm well mate i hope you are and uh hope you're enjoying um a little bit of history about the old club and uh gavin says he nearly gave up football to play gaelic football over here yes i was going to come to that in a bit actually um Carl Walsh Gunner, thank you, Jez. Pleasure, man. Pleasure. Always a pleasure, my friend. And uh, Oregon Gooner, cheers, mate. You're too kind. No, you are a legend in my eyes. Um, so we'll get back to old Pat Jennings. Uh, so Pat was essentially an economic performer who made his job look more difficult than necessary. Uh, thanks mainly to um, an incomparable positional sense he had this amazing way of being in the right place at the right time which was something i didn't see many goalkeepers have back then um his skills was one that was he would be so subtle in one-on-one -on -one situations in which he 
endeavoured to stand up as long as possible, knowing that to commit himself too early to a top player was a position to be lost. And countless opponents found themselves beguiled into shooting and um, from un impossible angles or delaying their strikes until it was just actually too late, enabling this outrageous Irishman to dive and smother the shot. I mean, the amount of times you can go back and look at past games. Uh, go, I mean, iconic one, the, the 70s, 70s um, the, the, the cup final against Man United. Look at the outrageous uh, saves he made at the feet uh, in that game. It was quite incredible. Um, the thing is, he also had no fear of risking his neck in getting at the feet of players and quite often would take a boot from an opponent many, many, many occasions um, that you'd see him go down and he'd take one for the team. He, he Seriously, he, 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 he was that sort of player. And this is something that he'd learned in his early days of playing, as we mentioned uh, back then, as Gavin O'Flattery says, uh, playing Gaelic football in his younger days. Before he came over, he joined Spurs. He was quite a pronounced player in Gaelic football. And it, I think that taught him that it was to dive and smother the threat. So he learned, I think, an awful lot from that. But as the seasons went by, and despite, despite being ousted, by Arsenal's new backup keeper, George Wood. The other goalkeeper, he, he made his meagre fee look as the signing fee for him for 45 grand. It, it, it made his, that meagre fee look um, more sickening joke at the expense of his former club. What he was achieving at Arsenal was something higher i think than he could ever probably experience or or was expecting um while spurs i mean spurs were right now in a mess tried a succession of replacements for pat jennings it was not until four years later when they were back in division one um that the jennings shirt was finally filled by the great the, or the arrival of the great Ray Clements. Um, now, Ray Clements went on to become an absolute legend goalkeeper for Tottenham Hotspur. Nobody can deny that. Pat helped Arsenal reach four cup finals, um, picking up his FA Cup fight, winners med, FA Cup winners medal in the iconic FA Cup final against Manchester United, where Arsenal won 3-2. Probably one of the most exciting FA Cup finals I was ever privileged to be at. Um, Arsenal went 2-0 up through goals from Brian Talbot, Frank Stapleton, 2-0 up at half-term, at uh, half-time, and were cruising. And it was a relaxed, very relaxed atmosphere in the tunnel end at uh, Wembley, and the old uh, the old um, statement used to be, whoever, whatever team got the tunnel end changing room, would win the FA Cup. And that, that is a fact that I think I think the stats go 80, 20 percent, something like that. Um, but we got pinned back 2-2. Neither of those goals from Man United were Pat Jennings' fault. It was basically Arsenal switched off. 2-0 up against Man United and um, two lovely goals from Brian Tolbert and Frank Stapleton. But Man United came back and we were now 2-2. Dying minutes. We're looking, we're looking at extra time now. And the Arsenal... Fans are now looking a little bit nervy. Well, it's not quite so happiness anymore. 
Pat Jennings on that day was outstanding. He was all up for it. He was really probably one of the most vocal times. Having watched that game so many times on replay to the defence and the midfield, that I think they were quite shocked at his attitude because, you know, Pat Jennings was not a particularly vocal goalkeeper. He was commanding, but he wasn't particularly vocal. And then all of a sudden, in the dying minutes, Alan Sunderland steps up, scores the winning goal, 3-2. And you can see that was it. Game was over. Man United players were on their knees, knackered. It was a really, really hot day that day at Wembley. It was a classic. It was a classic English FA Cup final. Very hot day. Two excellent teams battling it out. And that is the one major um, honour that Pat Jennings got. The FA Cup winner's medal. And I remember when he went up and um, he held the trophy and the open top bus parade around Highbury. And he was there with Alan Sunderland holding the FA Cup. Iconic days. Iconic days. Um, but um, his time was coming to the end because we'll come on to that in a little bit. But um, he also made another 42 appearances for Northern Ireland. And the fact Arsenal lost the other three cup finals they were in, uh, was by no means his fault. It was just Arsenal at time didn't have a great defence and we were not that great a team all round. Um, I mean, he played in three consecutive FA Cup finals. First goalkeeper in history to ever do that. The first one we played him was against Ipswich Town in 1977-78. Losing 1-0. And uh, one of the players in that winning Ipswich Town team, we bought. And that was Brian Talbot, who went on to score the goal, first goal against Man United the following year. And uh, then after the Man United win, the 79-80 Cup final, we lost to Division 2 at the time, West, uh, West Ham United. Tony Brooking, rise like a salmon, nutted it into the net. Nothing Pat Jennings could do about it. Um, and Arsenal were absolutely cracked that day. They were awful. Really, a cup final. They were absolutely cracked. Such a shame. Um, but it is what it is. Just got to have a quick squeak, guys, because I'm getting dry. But we go for more comments before we get into the final part. And um, uh, Arsenal first, love the history stuff, Jez. Keep it coming. Yeah, I'm going to be doing more, man. I haven't done any for a while. Um, not many people watch all this, but you guys that do, loving it. Hopefully, thank you. Uh, a new nan, great channel, Jez. Hope you're well. I am well, mate. Hope you and the family are very well. And uh, the legend that is the legend. Darren says, I remember reading about a player who scored against George Wood, who took his place. The player, can't remember who it was, did a paper article saying that he scored, saying when he scored, he said, that's for Pat. Oh, right, OK. Fair play. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. Um, Oregon Gunnar, was Jennings highly rated in the league? Yes, man. Absolutely. Yes, he was. Yeah, he was he was a top top goalkeeper back in time. Um, I mean, when Arsenal got him, it was a major major uh, thing. Um, you know, there was there was two or three. Man United were in for him. Man United wanted him, but that was that is why it's such a massive shock that you know a Tottenham iconic goalkeeper comes to Arsenal. For £45,000. Work that one out. I don't know. Um, Keith Birkinshaw really, I and mean, he admitted it years later, he really made a massive error 
in letting him go. Because Bat Jennings had a lot more in him. But Keith Birkinshaw had come in, uh, come, uh, Birkinshaw had come in and he decided he wanted to change it up. And basically, he thought Pat Jennings' time was up. Well, it took them four years to find another decent goalkeeper. And in that meantime, they were in a world of crap. And he admitted that. Fair play. He admitted that. Um, Tony Nery says, please like and subscribe. Yes, like and subscribe, people. Uh, always appreciate it. The likes really help the channel. It, the more likes there are, the more traction the show gets because it gets out to more people. And uh, that's always a massive, massive help. Um, so thank you for watching and thanks for liking and subscribing. Uh, right Adventures. Hello, Jez. Big up to you. Our channel already hit 60 subs today. Big fan of your awesome love, your knowledge. Uh, is your channel Right Adventures? Let me know. If it is, I will give you a sub straight after this show. Just put it in the chat, man. Let me know, yeah? Uh, Oregon Gunner says, Man United in the mud. Uh, they are off the last weekend, aren't they? Um, loved that. I absolutely loved that. Unfortunately, guys, after that game, I uh, did drink far too much wine. I seriously suffered the next day. It's not good. It's not a good thing to do. Um, it's not good. Uh, Darren, we all love 3-2 against United. Yep. Always. Uh, Del Bug Gunner TV. What's the crack, Jez? Hope you're good, pal. Hope you are, mate. Liked your show the other night. Watch that. Um, with Warren and all that, and uh, Manny and that. It's a good show, man. Well done. Nice one. Love it. Um, big up Static Delbert Gunner and Oregon Gunner. And uh, I've learned a lot about you, Jez. Big up a lot from you, Jez. Big up. Thank you, man. Uh, more to come. Always love it. Enjoy doing it. Lockie, 73. George Woods was terrible. Remember a 5-2 defeat to Spartak Moscow at Highbury? Ask uh, Woods arguing with fans. Um, I don't remember that, I don't think I was there, but um, yeah, he wasn't great. He wasn't great. Um, Warren's team talk, please, guys, hit the like button, smash it hard. The man is an absolute legend. Thank you, mate. I'm no more than a legend than any one of you other guys. I'm not. We're all in this together, and that's how we are. Um, Right adventures. I've just sub. That's his. That's it. That's it. Is that his channel, Del Boy? If it is, then I will go and sub straight after this. Yes, it is me and my son do exploring. Thank you, Jess. I'm grateful. Yeah, mate. I will straight after this, mate. I'll go and um, I'll go and sub you. No, no question. Um, uh, Oregon goodness is right adventures. Big up, buddy. Yeah, well done, man. Love the song. I'll actually, uh, go there and have a look at that. Alf, hope you're well, Jez. Yeah, I'm good, man. I am good. Um, hope you well. But we're gonna get into this little last little bit of it. Um, it's basically um, so we've come in now. It's June '85 um, that Pat Jennings decides to give up football, first flight football, and he returned to Spurs at the age of forty as uh, as a first time cover for ray clements basically this is because a certain player that will be the next one i do on arsenal iconic goalkeepers uh, a certain john lukic had joined arsenal in that 1983 and he made his, uh, his debut for arsenal in 1984 in 1985 lukic had become a regular um starting for arsenal and so pat june pat left pat jennings left in 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 the june um one major highlight for pat was in 1986 he played for northern ireland at the 1986 uh world cup finals in spain that was his sort of you know final time really um and on his retirement in 1987, Pat Jennings justifiably was awarded an OBE by the Queen for his services to football. And he remains a true ambassador of the game to this day. 
Um, he's still an ambassador at Tottenham Hotspur, and respect to him for that. Um, he was an iconic goalkeeper for Arsenal Football Club. No one can deny that. And um, the fact how we got him, um, it is quite something else. Um, I, 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 I'll be on the first to say, when he first came, I was like, mm, I'm not sure about this. Um, naivety by me, for sure, absolutely. And I've been... Um, I've been wrong about many players. I've been, and I, I, I'll put my hands up and say, Ramsdale, who knew? Um, I made the statement on Lee Gunner's channel, don't want him. Why have we got him? He shut my mouth. And anybody that does, thank, fair, you know, fair play to them because um, I'll be the first to stand up and say, I'm wrong and respect. But, before we wrap it up, um, we just say, um, Warren Team Talk, when we win the league, will you and Lee do a drunken string? Um, I've actually said, <laughs> Lee said, we're going to do, um, we're going to do a bottle of champagne each live on stream. Um, so that'd be madness. Um, Ty, how are you, mate? Hope you're well. Good to see you, fella. Um, and uh, yeah, it well, we'll see. What uh, right, adventures, thanks, guys. Love to see you all. My son says thank you as well. We're a team, and we've chosen Arsenal as his team. Wow, young man, welcome to the Arsenal family. Enjoy, because I think there's good times coming ahead. I really do. And welcome as a gunner, and um. Good to see you, my friend. And uh, looking forward to seeing your streams. And uh, Hood Crypto, big up. Nice to see you, friend. Thank you. And uh, smash the lights up. I don't know how I can't see the lights on here because it won't let me do it. But um, Joseph Hamlin, uh, big up, Jason County Court, County Court, Ireland. Lovely, 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 lovely place. I've only been to Ireland three times. Um, I've been to County Cork and Dublin and another place where I went fishing. Um, and that was back in the 90s. Lock Low, is it? L O U G H. I'll probably not pronounce that right. But um, Ty Hussein says, Jez, was Massimo Talibi any good? Who's, who's that? Go on. If he was an Arsenal player, I don't know him, man. Um, Oregon, I hope to, so, to move to the States. I got a dear friend your way. Me and my son want to explore, explore. So videos, it, it looks beautiful your way. Out in Oregon. Oregon, USA. Uh, um, Darren Southern, this is your life appearance with Michael Aspel. <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. Yeah, you did, yeah. Uh, Delbo Gunner says, Jesus caught in the house tonight. I am the only dub. You know, you're talking Irish stuff now, man. Um, it's a different different game over there. Um, Ramsdale, Rams, uh, Danny VR says, Ramsdale over Pickford any day. I'd agree with you on that one. I think Ramsdale is better. Uh, yeah, bro, it's gorgeous out here. Rains a lot, though, but not any more than Britain. If you love the forest, beaches, the mountains, Oregon is the place. Don't it get cold out there, though, uh, DVS? Don't it get cold? A bit cold in the winter. Uh, uh, Warren's team talk. Uh, hi, team. I hope you're well. Um, and Taib Hussein. I, hi, Warren. And Alf says, biggest fish you've caught, Jez? Well, I haven't recently, but I've been in mass. I have for, oh, crikey. Years, years and years, man, fishing. The biggest fish I've caught, I was massive into carp fishing. Um, the biggest UK carp I've ever caught is 40 pounds, four ounces. The biggest European, well, fr French carp I've caught was 58 pounds, six ounces. Um, but um, I haven't done a lot of 
fishing for a few years. Um, I'd like to get back into it come this year. I'm starting to miss it. I've been watching an awful lot of YouTube channels uh, on fishing, and it sort of got wetted the palate a little bit, you know. So I'm thinking of uh, getting all the gear back out. And uh, my love, my, my wife loves going fishing. And she, we, we used to go to France and other places. We'd go for a week in our bivvies and we'd sit there and she'd cook on the bank side. And it was great. Absolutely brilliant. Loved it. Um, Annie Herbert, how are you, mate? Uh, big up, Jez. Hope you're well. Um, and uh, enjoyed you on the stream the other week, mate. Um, yes, cold now, about six degrees south, 43 Fahrenheit right now. But now clouds and the sun is a beast, mate. <laughs> really? Um, uh, question, Jess, whose goal was better, Rashford's or Saka? They were both good goals. Well, that's a bloody good question. That's a tricky, tricky question. I'm, I am going to be biased. Um, I am marginally going to go Saka. I'll tell you for why. Because he had to move that ball around two players um, and slot that. But I won't deny, I think Rashford's goal was excellent. You know, the swerve he got on that was sublime. And the fact, it was maybe a little bit further out than the Sackers. So it's a hard one to call. But I'll give it to Saka because he had to come inside a little bit and swerve it but yeah it's a great question man great question um just uh a type to just can you cook yes i can yes i can um i'm not a top chef but i i can cook decent food yes i always cook the roast dinners at my house and i cook the absolute meanest paella um and uh i love cooking actually I'm actually, I've got to cook my tea after this. But I will say this. My wife makes the most wonderful pies. They are unbloody believable. And I'm having one tonight. Turkey and Stilton pie. New potatoes, green beans. Um, yeah, can't wait. Can't wait. Um, Alf, upload some fishing vids, Jez, which would be, that would be, I haven't got any, mate. I've never videoed any of them. I've never done any fishing videos. I haven't. Um, I I haven't been seriously fishing probably since five years ago. My last serious uh, fishing trip was to France with two uh, of my friends. We had this late to ourselves. And I've put the rods out there. And I only had rods out, three rods out there, and I had a bite. And the first fish I had was a 38-pound mirror carp. And I didn't even got my bivy set up or anything. And um, it was just craziness because the amount of fish I was catching, <laughs> it was just sublime. It was, it's crazy. Anything under 25 pounds, I never bothered to uh, photograph because there was – Big fish coming out, and it was just madness, madness. Um, uh, what was team talk? Just I know it's really off key, but what about some fishing videos? Yeah, I, I, mate, I'm I, okay. I, I might go in the summer. Um, I might go in the summer and um, take a camera with us. But um, yeah, I, I am very fortunate, and I'll. It's, I'm very proud of this. I am actually a member of the British Carp Study Group, which is a very, very, very exclusive fishing group. Um, there's only 300 members worldwide, and it's very hard to get in. And you have to have a proven track record of being able to catch carp. And uh, you might sometimes see me with a red T-shirt on, and it's got BCSG Jez. That's my member's one of my members' shirts. Anyways, another story. Let's get back to football. Uh, Sackers was fire. Absolutely, totally agree. Uh, both goals were great. Can't separate them. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm being biased. I am. Uh, Dale Boyd, Gunner TV. Thanks for the sub, bro. And um, 
uh, Warren fishes for tadpoles. Really? Okay. <laughs> uh, Fish Locky is a good YouTube sea fishing channel. Yeah, I've never done a lot of sea fishing, man. I'll be honest. I've, I've done a bit, um, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. I won't lie. I'm very. I, I don't like boats. I get seasick on the Norfolk Broads, and that is not a lie. I went on the Norfolk Broads on a holiday um, back in, crikey, the 80s, early, very early 80s, with some friends, and I actually got seasick going across a place called Barton Broad, which is a massive lake, if you like, in Norfolk, and I got seasick. There you go. Uh, Oregon, good. Off to lunch. Cheers, Jess and chat. Up the arsenal. Yeah. Always come on, you gunners. Uh, study 40 likes, like and subscribe. And uh, I'm going to call it now, guys. Anthony Herbert, Jez, Pat Jennings, in your opinion, who was better for Arsenal or Tottenham? Um, oh, mate, he was better at Arsenal. I'll tell you for sure. But I'll tell you for why. He had a better quality of plays with him. And um, he went on to be a great, great, great Arsenal goalkeeper. There's no question. No question. Um, now, interestingly, guys, I've been asked by a fair few people to do a video about um, a goalkeeper I never saw. Okay. Jack Kelsey, um, Wales international player. He was an iconic goalkeeper for Arsenal. I never saw him play. He was in Arsenal in the 50s, 60s. If you want me to do one on that, I will do it. But I can't speak from facts because I never, ever saw him. I know of him. I know about him. Um, but I never watched him play. So I will do it. If you, if you guys want me to do it, I'll do it. But um, uh, it would have to be in a couple of weeks. But I will do it. Uh, Tybe says, um, Jess, what's your favourite fish in terms of taste? Well, that's, I'm, I'm very varied there, man. I like sea bass, sea bream. I like place. I like um, salmon. Um, yeah, it's, it's quite varied. So, um, crustacean-wise, I like lobster, not keen and crab. Um, so, yeah, I've got a very varied taste, really. Very varied taste. Uh, Static says, Jez, thank you for the quality history video. Pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. I haven't done one for a while. Um, Mike says, uh, good to see you, mate. Just joined. Have we mentioned the Hillsborough Snowballs? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't, actually. I, I should have done, shouldn't I? I didn't. Um, the Snowballs against Pat Jennings you're talking about. Um, no, I didn't, I didn't, mate. I forgot all about that. Uh, Jez, question. What qualities or similarity do you see in Ramsdale compared to Pat Jennings? Uh, oh, that's a, that's a good question. Mm. Ramsdale's far more vocal. Um, Ramsdale is not as big as Jennings. Um, but Ramsdale's kicking ability, I would suggest, is better than Pat Jennings. But Pat Jennings' ability in crosses, coming into the box corners, etc., etc., I think is better. I think Ramsdale sometimes values to punch or palm, whereas Pat Jennings would literally go into the war zone and, like, get in there and grab it. So... Um, it's a tricky one, mate. It's a tricky one. Um, the thing is, they're two different keepers in two different times, aren't they? You know, the football's changed so much from the Division One times that Pat Jennings played in. The game now is a lot, lot quicker. So, goalkeepers, players have to react a lot quicker. So, it's a tricky one. It's a very, very tricky one, to be fair. Um Warren says that Darren Sullivan shark fishing is one of the most exciting things I've ever seen. Never done it. Um, 
Warren says, yes, please, Jez. My dad told me all about him. Uh, you talk about Jack Kelsey. Yeah. Um, Jez, would you do a stream on your all-time start living for Arsenal? Yeah, I, I can do that. Yeah, I can do that, man. Yeah, no worries. No worries. I'll tell you what, I, 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 I'll do that and get some people on with me to give you... Um, yeah, let's do that. Let's do that sometime. Let's get some guys on. Let's get some of you guys on. To give, give us some... Uh, Give us some of your your views as well. Um, uh, yes, he used to work in the club shop in Avenal Road, um, not far from the house. So, um, Mike Denton, who was Pat's deputy, George Wood. Uh, George Wood, no, it was actually eventually um, uh, Jack. Um, George Wood was there, but it actually became John Lukic eventually. That was 83. Um, and George was about, George Wood was about, but he wasn't great, to be fair. Uh, love all fish, especially ha oh, halibut, man. Yeah, love it. Love it. Uh, just, I keep, completely agree. Two keep goalkeepers from two very different eras. Thanks for answering my question. Interesting. Pleasure, man. Always a pleasure. Um, Tyve says, Jez, when you were goalkeeper gloved introduced, I remember watching YouTube where goalkeepers never wore gloves. I think the goalkeeper gloves came in in the mid 60s. Um, I think I don't know. I'll have to look at it. I'll have to look at it. Um, although, if you go back in time and look at footage of gold, some goalkeepers in the winter of the 30s, they had woolen gloves on. Not proper goalkeeper gloves, but woolen gloves. Um, but I wouldn't classify them to be proper gloves. They would just keep your hands warm. Um, Arsenal first, would that be excellent? Yeah, I'd, yeah, let's do that one. Let's let's do an Arsenal eleven. Now, I tell you what, let's do an Arsenal. Let's do an Arsenal fourteen. That'd be fair. Uh, and um, take it from there. Bob Will, uh, Anthony said Bob Wilson never wore gloves. No, he didn't. Um, and uh, anyway, guys, we're going to call it there. I will set up a stream and I'll, I'll put it out there. Um, that anybody wants to join and do, we were doing Arsenal 11 for, or Arsenal 14, whatever. That'd be quite interesting. Um, but we'll do it in fairness from, we won't go back in time. You know, there's no point. None of us were there. None of us are there in the 30s, all that. It's pointless. Um, we do it. Let's say, let's what should we what should we do? What should we do? Let's say what from 70, 71 onwards. Would that be fair? Give us your ideas, give us your clues. Um, and then we'll we'll, we'll do that. That'd be quite fun, actually. Uh, Darius's gloves are a nightmare. Once wore wet through weather gloves on a dry day, and the ball slipped straight from my hands in again. Darren, why don't you take the bleeding gloves off then? Seriously, come on. Um, yeah, and uh, Anthony said 80s to present. Okay, I'll make a note of that 80s to present. 80s to present. Yeah, okay. Like that. Anthony, you've got to come on and give us your opinion. We'll get Warren on. Don't know. We'll get um, Darren on, whoever. We'll probably get, we'll definitely get Kenny on. That's for sure. Um, so, um, yes, and they've got now got some people saying uh, from the 70s onwards, I'd say all the 80s. Uh, let's we'll go with the 80s. Let's go with the 80s because I think that's that's more fair. Um, um, Warren says, I remember wearing woolen goalkeeper gloves at school in the late 70s, and they were woolen. There, they would have been. Um, when, when I was a little kid playing football, nobody had no, none of the goalkeepers I played. We, I mean, I was shit at football. Let's get it right. Um, nobody had proper goalkeeping gloves. Um, do you think we can get a CM from the window transfer? Just a big gloves, uh, the content. Um, I like to think so. 
but where from at this point in time, mate, I don't bloody know. I don't know. Um, I don't know, mate. Uh, Anthony, I'll be on. Good man. You'll be the first on. I'll, I'll get Kenny will be there and um, get Darren on. Uh, we'll get some old heads on here. Uh, get Static on if we can. Warren, definitely. Uh, Warren's got me there. Absolutely. We'll have Warren there. And um, yeah, I mean, that'd be good fun, that one, actually. That will be right laugh. Um, so, going to wrap it, guys. Got to go and cook my tea. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it, say in the comments. Um, got more to come. The next goalkeeper up in the next week, two weeks, will be uh, John Lukic, um, who obviously we know was at the iconic game Anfield 89 that every player, sorry, every Arsenal fan in the world has been to, was there. Um, some were, a lot weren't. And I know a lot of YouTubers who purport they were there and i can assure you they bloody well weren't and um it is what it is um so we leave it there and uh tom palmer best arsenal channel on youtube great that you care about teaching maybe the young fans about the history of the club i try mate i try unfortunately uh i only get probably four or five in here that watch that are actually uh, watch on playback fair enough they're about 15 16 and they absolutely love it most arsenal youngsters don't give a shit about the history of the club because they've never been taught it because arsenal football club don't preach it so why would they care simple isn't it um wow well, that would be great take care jez yeah always mate static you're a legend uh darren nice one darren you have to come on for that one man uh, when we do that, the 80s onwards, um, that'd be awesome. Um, Gavin says, oh, thank you, mate. Uh, great show. Cheers, Jez. Thank you, man, for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. One of your iconic players from uh, Ireland, Northern Ireland, I know. But John was a good keeper for us and Lee. Yeah, John Luskic, man, was a great goalkeeper. He was. And I will, too, come on definitely. Yeah, Warren, you've got to be there, man. Uh, with your 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 uh, knowledge and experience, uh, you've got to be there. But we're going to call it, guys. I'm going to do the end uh, end um, jobby, and uh, I'm starving. I've got to go and cook my tea. Uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it, and there'll be more to come. There's a podcast tomorrow at six o'clock. Um, so uh, with Kenny, I'm looking to get a couple of other people to join. So um, let us know. Take care, Victoria Concordia Crescent. I'm relieved to hear that you've been to some fireplaces. It's hard to carry on when you feel all alone. Now I've swung back down again. It's worse than it was before. If I had a Seen such riches I could live on